Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this Autotask webinar, Winning New Clients and Managing Them Profitably for Life. My name is Richard Coyne. I'm the Business Development Manager at Autotask, and we're lucky to be joined today by a great cast, Mark Winter, VP of Sales over at Rapid Fire Tools. And thank you very much to Jeff Sumner. He's a great joint customer of Autotask and Rapid Fire Tools, and it takes so much for you guys to show up and give us an hour out of your day to join us for this webinar, but it takes even more for a guy like Jeff to come on, tell his success story, and help us create and deliver on part of this presentation. So thank you to everyone for joining us, and thank you to my guest presenters today. So I want to first off tell you about the software you're viewing on today. You're viewing on Cisco WebEx. If you're experiencing any technical issues, get a hold of me. You can send me a message through the chat box um, right over to the marketing host. I'll make sure you guys get taken care of the best you can. Any questions for our panelists today, enter them in the Q&A box in the bottom. We'll love to answer those questions. That's what we're here for, guys. And if it makes sense to answer right at the time, We'll get to that. Otherwise, you know what we're going to do? We have a Q&A session at the end that's going to come up after our special offer. So get those in there. We'd love to have them. Guys, today's webinar is being recorded. So if you're trying to take some notes or you want to show this to someone else on your team, this is going to be recorded. It should be up and edited by uh, hopefully by end of day tomorrow. And it will be at autotask.com. And you can see there in the upcoming webinars, there's also an on-demand section as well. So check that out. Check that out. We have a ton of great material out there. Um, uh, there's going to be a post-webinar survey. It's going to appear in your browser, the inclusion of the presentation. Um, since we appreciate you guys coming here so much, we also appreciate your feedback because we do these things for you guys. We want to deliver value, introduce you to the vendors that you need to meet, and uh, so make sure you can give us some feedback there if you've got a few minutes. So with that, guys, I want to get us kicked off today for winning new clients and managing them profitably, profitably for life. Remind everyone, my name is Richard Coulian, Business Development Manager at Autotask. Lucky to be joined today by Jeff Sumner, President of Tech Guides, and Mark Winter, VP of Sales from Rapid Fire Tools. And guys, let's get up and running. I know you guys got a busy day in front of you. So with our agenda today, we're going to talk about winning those new clients and managing them profitably. I'm going to show you how you can actually manage and service those clients with Autotask in a brief fashion with business automation. Then we will go in and see our testimonial here from Jeff on, on why he's with us today. And then we do have some great special offers from both the Rapid Fire side and the Autotask side. And then we will go into that Q&A, as I mentioned. So what I want to do right now is introduce Mark Winter. Mark is a guy that I see on the road sometimes. We get out there in the channel. Rapid Fire is a, is a great partner of Autotask. They've been involved in a lot of our events, and getting to work with Mark has been a great experience, getting to work with all those guys over there. So I want to introduce Mark Winter, VP of Sales, Rapid Fire Tools for winning new clients and managing them properly for life. Welcome, Mark. Hey, thanks so much, Rich. Really appreciate it. And yeah, it's great to see you on the road and uh, work with you guys as well. Uh, terrific partnership. Um, so I'm Mark Winter, uh, VP Sales of uh, Rapid Fire Tools. Um, just briefly, a little bit about our company. It was founded in '97 uh, as a managed service provider to large organizations, and um, we were a Microsoft Gold ISV partner. Uh, we developed our own monitoring platform during that time, and then later really focused our efforts on developing and marketing tools specifically for the IT service provider community. Um, these tools include um, our own monitoring system called Proactive Watch, and of course the Rapid Fire Tool Suite that includes Network Detective, which I'll talk a lot more about today. Uh, um, the Network Detective platform is comprised of three distinct modules now, and these can be purchased separately or together as a bundle, kind of depending on your business needs. Um, there's thousands of really happy users of our product, um, and we've been selling this for several years. Um, we offer you know, the Network Assessment Module, also the Security Assessment Module that um, as you'll see, service providers can use in conjunction with the network module to help identify areas of risk when prospecting uh, both to win new business, but it's also a great way to deliver new security service to new and existing clients. And our exchange module gives you the details you need to document prospect and client um, exchange environments, and it's great for identifying new projects and perfect for migrations as well. So, a little bit about network assessments. Uh, you know, they've got their place in prospecting situations as well as using regularly for existing clients. And I think uh, Jeff's going to talk a good bit more about that. And when it comes to new business, you know, we all do assessments to some degree, and, and you've got to, because unless you're looking for trouble, right, you can't really properly provide a quotation to a prospect unless you know about their business, um, how they currently use IT in their business, and of course the technical makeup of their current network and systems. You've got to know what you're going to be supporting. You know, how many workstations are active on the network? What type of applications they have? Um, what are the makeup of the PCs? Are they new? Are they old? What's the operating system? How much memory, et cetera? Because this gives you an idea of the types of issues you're likely to encounter and how needy that organization might be. And, of course, how many servers, printers, network devices, et cetera, will you be supporting? And with an Active Directory, there's a lot more to understand. Is it properly set up, well-maintained? 
And how secure is the network from the outside? So performing a detailed network assessment uh, is really a necessary component of you know, understanding the networks that you can provide a quotation and then onboard the client. Um, but network assessments are useful for more than just prospecting and onboarding. Um, you might also perform network assessments prior to engagements, whether they're new or existing clients. Help you eliminate any unwanted surprises. And more importantly, you could run this afterwards as well to you know, document the before and after results of your work. I spoke with a partner earlier this week, um, happened to have been at a conference. He told me how much he loved our tools, but more important, uh, he was thrilled. He ran an assessment on an existing customer. And he was able to upsell a new Sonic firewall due to the information they found in the report. So it was a $2,000 profit for him. You know, we also think you should be providing regular health check network assessments for all of your customers. Uh, make sure that you aren't supporting systems that might have been added without your knowledge and that you're not being paid to support. Um, you know, also, what about security assessments? You know, far too many service providers don't do these. And that's because they lack detailed expertise and don't want the expense of maybe hiring security experts. But your clients really deserve to know that their business network and data is protected from the inside and outside, and they'll pay for this service. And that's whether you're running these as, um, or selling these rather, as one-offs or as a managed security service for recurring revenues. And I see people doing these at uh, $199, $299 and up per quarter. Great additional recurring revenue. And I'm told how, all the time how useful this is to audit your own work. Uh, make sure you're delivering and doing your job as you told them they would. And make sure no one comes in behind you with a list of problems. You know, the critical thing here is that you need a way to perform these assessments quickly and easily so that you're not bogged down in you know, expensive data collection and all that time it takes to do the data collection and then build the deliverable reports. So at this point, let me give you a brief description of performing network assessments with Network Detective. It's specifically designed so that you can run a data collector on your prospect or client network uh, without installing any software. That way, it's completely non-invasive. There's no registry changes, nothing in add remove programs, nothing at all is installed. Um, it works very quickly. Uh, scans can run in as little as 20 to 30 minutes for smaller networks. Um, the data collector that does the scan, it gathers the information, produces a zip file, and then you bring that back to your office and import that into the Network Detective app. And that's where you brand the reports with your logos and generate the reports. It's easy to do. I talk to salespeople all the time who go on site run the data collector during their introductory meeting with the potential client. <clears throat> it gathers the data while they're running through their interview and building rapport with the prospect. So this is important. I'm often asked, why would I need Network, uh, network Detective if I've got Kaseya or Enable or some other monitoring system? So sure, you can install a bunch of licenses or even put a probe out there for a week or two. What does that cost you, you know, for the extra licenses? let alone the time and effort to install it, and maybe uninstall it if you don't get the account. And what happens when, in a prospecting situation, something goes wrong? You know, consider if you go in, install some software on a network that's not yours to be managed, something happens later that day, the next day, who are they going to blame themselves? No, they're going to probably blame you, and you might even get a chance to come back and fix that problem for free. As I said before, Network Detective is completely non-invasive. You run the data collector without installing anything, and you bring a data file back to build the reports. Now, and let me just say, on the other hand, Network Detective is not going to get you some of the things that um, monitoring systems will, like uh, metrics and statistics. Um, you know, agent-based systems like Kaseya or a Proactive Watch can be running for weeks or longer. And you know, it's perfect for gathering performance-based information in those kinds of reports. But really, that's normally not appropriate for new prospects. However, there's still a really good reason to run Network Detective on your existing clients where you do have monitoring installed. And that's because typically, these programs don't perform any real ongoing analysis or reporting of Active Directory. Um, nor do they do external vulnerability scans or regularly look for open ports on an IP scan on the network, looking for security holes. Nor do they really provide professional documentation on things like network shares and security policies. And you know, using Network Detective regularly will do all that for you. So as I said, it, it's very quick and easy to do. Uh, we found that your average you know, 5 to 50 workstation environment is going to take, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. The entire process is very straightforward. It's just broken into a few simple steps. First, before you go on site, you're going to kick off the external vulnerability scan. It's easy to do. Um, you might also, if you're going to be using a USB drive, 
you go ahead and prep that before you go on site. Next, on site, you'll initiate the uh, network data collection. Typically, you run that from the domain controller. It can be run, like I said, directly from a thumb drive. Um, if you're using the security module, there might be some additional uh, data collection you'll do. It takes a minute or two per machine. Do that while the network scan's running. Finally, it's back to your office where you import that data, set up your branding, and build the reports. So let me show you how simple this is to do. You know, like I said, it's very easy, and technically savvy IT uh, people can really do this themselves. It saves you the time and expense of um, you know, sending overworked senior techs out to do the initial project scope. It's a wizard-driven front end. And as a reminder, it does not install. It's just an EXE that runs and creates an output file. Basically, you're going to confirm the items and kind of click next through all the screens. Um, of course, change any of the parameters that need changing. And really, that's about it. Once it's done, it's done. Um, we've also got a, a really cool feature called Inform. This allows you to create your own IT checklists, questionnaires, and surveys. Um, it allows you to gather information that you know, no automated data collectors are able to gather. Um, you know, think about things such as the uh, status of the server room, um, its temperature, the cabling. Document the phone system or the fax system. And of course, find out if they've got processes for uh, BYOD and document what those are. You know, these are things that you either need to see for yourself or ask your clients. Now, you can use our own built-in template as is, or modify it, or you can even, even create your own from scratch if you have your own checklists. Um, the reports that come out are the response reports, import pictures. That really makes a statement. And this is really also extremely cool. Um, there's things that uh, you can identify to be included in strength, strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats, and we automatically build that report for you. So it's also really easy to set up the branding. You can set up your default branding, and you can also modify that per customer if you like. It's, it's simple. Enter the customer name um, so that it shows what it's prepared for. Um, you as prepared by, of course. Add yours or your customer's logos. Choose from a number of different layouts that uh, you've got within Network Detective, and pick the colors you want, or even create your own palette. Choose any of our built-in images, like healthcare, lawyer, retail, auto, or even import your own. Make these reports completely your own, and they're completely white labeled. And the reports you get are great. Uh, and by the way, let me just mention that um, all of our sample reports are available on our website. Um, they're in PDF form, but what gets generated by Network Detective are Word documents. And in these reports, there are literally hundreds of potential door openers that um, Network Detective can help you discover. But all you need to uncover is you know, maybe one or two critical issues, and you're in. So let me just run very quickly um, through a couple of examples. So first, let me just tell you on these um, next few slides, these are real screenshots that we just captured and put on here. And note that Network Detective highlights in red potential issues for your review. And in this example, we're looking at a list of users. And those that are in, in red, those are accounts that are active but haven't logged in for over 30 days. These are people that are probably no longer with the company, a huge security risk for that prospect or customer. You know, we provide a Microsoft spreadsheet output as well. And here, we're looking at things like um, old hardware, um, or maybe look for operating systems and extended support, or old applications still in use. You know, obviously, this helps you find and document hardware refreshes or even an XP migration. All right, weak local passwords. Uh, what more can I say? It goes to poor security practices or policies. Network Detective performs a port scan internal to your client or prospect network. It looks for common insecure ports that can be exploited. And here we're looking at the missing patch section. So this client clearly does not have solid patch management in place. So you know, think about it. What's their current IT provider doing for them? You know, it's really easy to sell against red. I'm told that all the time when I show this at trade shows. We also check to see if antivirus and anti-spyware are installed and are up to date. Um, you know, look for inconsistent vendors or systems without protection. You know, it can be really easy to upsell a centrally managed system or one that you might have included in your monitoring package. Um, an internal vulnerability scan shown here you can find insecure outbound ports and protocol access. And these are things that can be exploited by malware or bots that can, you know, open the network up to data theft or more. You know, again, here you could upsell a new firewall or simply a project to reconfigure it. Or if it's a client that, that's, um, and this should be covered under your managed services, <laughs> definitely fix the problem before somebody else sees it. Um, you know, finally, an external vulnerability scan 
um, tests whether there are ports open on the network firewall that can be hacked or exploited. It's a terrific report when selling new business, and, and as well as to run regularly on your existing client sites. So I know I've covered um, a lot of information, uh, and there's a lot of great things that you can find in document to win new customers or new projects. So once you've won them, then what? You need to onboard them, and Network Detective gives you solid and consistent documentation for all of your customer and clients that you're onboarding. You know, think about that. Your help desk will know exactly where to go if they need more information when they're trying to solve a problem. You know, uh, things like who's in what security group, etc. And you have a PSA like Autotask, right? You can automatically create contacts in Autotask as well as populate configurations to eliminate the drudgery of hand entering all of that, let alone uh, you know, the potential for error if you are hand entering it. And now that they're on board, that's really when you want to be using Autotask. So I hope I've given you some ideas on how you can use Network Detective to you know, win new business. And now let me turn this presentation over to Rich. Rich, you there? Yeah, Mark, and, and thank you very much. And, and guys, this really does lead into what we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and, and talk about with how you're actually managing these clients, bringing them on, because it is so important to have all that information and, and have a place that you can put it, so that you can actually, uh, so that you can actually deliver on it and, and find more opportunities. So I'm going to briefly talk. A lot of the people on the call you might be familiar with Autotask, but I'm um, quickly bringing up to speed. My name is Richard Coyne, Business Development Manager. I get to work with our partners. I get to work with our clients. I get to work with a lot of people in the channel. So it's exciting. Exciting to be here for this presentation and getting a few minutes with you guys. So quickly, we're the world's number one provider of cloud-based IT business management software, born and built in the cloud since 2001, really focused on services automation, helping you deliver and sell to your clients a little bit more and get you out of the drudgery, as, as Mark was talking about, of that, that, manual, that manual labor that goes into business often. So we have a CRM, project management, service desk, time and expense, contracts and billing, knowledge base, and more, all in one integrated platform all hosted in the cloud to allow you to work better with your network. And your network's not your LinkedIn connections. It's not your Facebook friends. It's the people in your business that mean something to you. It's your clients. It's your resources. It's everyone in your business that's going to help you, help you out with anything that you're doing. So we have a bunch of different products in there from uh, Taskfire, which is going to allow you to connect up with enterprise and internal IT staffs. We have a client access portal, which is going to allow you to have your clients opening up level one support tickets and everything like that. Um, we have a great online community, community.autotask.com, where people like Jeff and other people out there that are using our software are sharing best practices, sharing things that they've learned out there. And we like to say that we can replace multiple applications with our one integrated solution. So now when we're talking about onboarding clients and bringing clients in and, and recognizing an opportunity, I want to talk about why Autotask and the integration across those business processes is going to be a big deal for you in this process. So Autotask helps you generate revenue across what we like to call are the four critical stages to securing clients for life. And that's by automating, automating the client life cycle. So when we're in there and you're trying to find these new clients, find that opportunity, how do you get those names into a place where everyone in your company can actually access those? Because if you're going out there and meeting people at trade shows and the only place that name goes is on a business card on your desk or into your inbox, what if that person leaves your company? You don't have that institutional knowledge. So Autotask has a CRM built in, as I mentioned. We have accounts, contacts you can quote out of Autotask, manage to your pipeline, and, have, and actually market out of Autotask. So that starts the process. You meet someone, you see that there's potentially an opportunity, you get in there. You know, guys, when you're getting there trying to sell managed services, a lot of the times you're going to have to dip your toe in there and show them that you can do what you can do. So you're going to probably trying to win a one-time solution. With Autotask, is a great project management tool, um, contracts, resources, and tasks and time and expense and billing, of course, we all want to get paid because once you do that one-time solution, great, and you go in there and maybe it's the, the product with rapid fire and you're going in there and doing an audit of what they have, that one-time solution is going to potentially lead you into recurring services. That's where you guys can start to build some predictability in your business, build some predictability into their business. And when you're getting into those recurring services, be the managed cloud or support, um, Autopest is going to be there for you from the service desk side, all the different types of contracts. It's no longer a one-time contract. You can set up recurring ones. Um, of course, managing your tickets and alerts from anything that's coming in. If you guys are out there managing against service level agreements, that's what Autotask does. That's our bread and butter is managing on and delivering on and executing on service level agreements and reporting on them as well, rather. And, uh, of course, time expense, and it's all about getting paid. And as Mark was talking about understanding your clients, I mean, that's really where we see our successful clients going is they become that trusted advisor, that outsourced IT department for their clients because they have 
you know, they have accountants on the outside. They have all these different people in their business that stick around for a while. Why don't you become that trusted advisor? Really start to understand their business because when you understand their business, that allows you to go out and find other people that are like them and talk to them a little bit more appropriately when you are prospecting them. And so with Autotask, we like to say with all that mission-critical data going through one, uh, through one system, it allows you to really have an opportunity to work efficiently and profitably. So let me push forward here, guys. And this is a quick brief presentation uh, or representation of how our service desk automation tool is going to allow you to really function well and function efficiently. So a service request is going to be coming in from one of your clients, and they can come into Autotask by a variety of ways or come into you by a variety of ways. So it come in from an alert from an RMM-type tool or from a BDR-type tool that's integrated with Autotask. Client Access Portal, as I mentioned, is a place where you would go out there and offer your clients the ability to, to look at their bill, do different things, but also create those tickets that will automatically feed you. You won't have to have them give you a call, which you'll see on the bottom. That's the only one that can't automatically create a ticket. Um, we wish that it could, but those user calls, your customers are always going to be calling you. I don't think that will ever stop. And, of course, with an email, we actually have an email parser that now can automatically create a ticket. So once that ticket's automatically created, now we can start to service the client. And uh, once you, you service the client and actually deliver on what you promised or deliver on what you sold, um, once that ticket's created, it can actually have a favorite or based on the work type or the alert type, it can actually automatically start those assignments, send out notifications to the respective parties, start to count against your service level agreements. And of course, once that work is done, it can actually kick out an automated survey because it's so difficult to get these clients. Let's make sure we can keep them and uh, make sure that we're understanding maybe a resource had a bad day on your side and just went out there gives you the opportunity to catch things upstream. And of course, if you're doing great work, it gives you the opportunity to go in there and see if there's anything else you can do as well or ask for a referral. Um, so it's great to have a survey be a piece of our product, and we're, we're very happy to bring that in a, a couple years ago. Now it's going to take that work that you did and tie that service desk ticket to a specific type of contract, be it those, what I mentioned, recurring services, block hours, retainers, time and material, incident, all the way through. All those different types of contracts are able to set up in Autotask for your specific clients because you have complex agreements with these guys. Let's make sure that we have it above board and that your guys aren't going on site, getting out there and doing work that you're not being paid for or uh, making sure that you have in the number of users that you're currently supporting, as Mark was mentioning. You want to be able to recognize all the opportunity and bill for everything that you should be billing for because if you don't bill for it now, you'll never be able to bill for it. And guys, that service desk ticket, those contracts are going to go out, show up in your invoices, your reports, and your profitability, which, um, guys, let's, let's look a little bit further now right now. And, of course, we've got a major um, integrations with the major accounting packages out there, um, and we would definitely, it's all about getting paid. So, guys, this is our service desk operational dashboard, and this is going to allow you to see what's going on um, from the aspect of where you need to be working, what's going on. And uh, you can see service desk tickets by queue. You're able to set up different types of queues with different types of work types. Um, and see where everything's going on from a, a service desk manager perspective. See all the different priorities and, of course, your performance on those tickets, what's going on, and the recurring types of tickets that are going on. Now, these are new. These are our performance dashboards, and these are based off of our data warehouse that allows us to have really um, actionable data put into one place because when you have everything going through one system, it allows you to really be able to dig into your data the way that you'd like to. Um, so with Autotask, you can see here that this is showing you your backlog. This is just a one shot. we are actually able to go in there and filter by clients, filter by SLA missed, filter by anything that's going on in your business because we have those fields in our software. Um, there's SLA reports for scheduled reviews. And these scheduled reviews we were talking about before, you've got to be in there talking to your clients. And you've got to be in there with every opportunity that you can. So with Autotask, you're actually going to be able to go in there and show them, hey, I'm meeting these service level agreements. Or maybe you have to take something out of your offering because you're missing service level agreements all the time because maybe you had an ambitious SLA on something. This is going to allow you to not make that mistake in the future by being able to see those. So you can show your clients that you met those SLA metrics. Communicate your value to them because uh, at the end of the month, IT is, is viewed as a cost. It, it, and when you have a business owner, especially in the SMB space, always looking to eliminate costs because that's directly impacting their pocket. So you want to be able to communicate your value. Our monthly operational reviews. Now, that's where something like, like the Rapid Fire Tools, what they have to offer is something where you can go in there and say, you know, we've been working for you, or maybe you go in there and try and win a new client, and you're representing to them all of the, uh, all of the mistakes or all of the opportunity that you have to fix some of their problems. Um, but make sure that you're communicating with your clients. And, of course, quarterly business reviews. It's just getting in there, understanding your clients, asking for referrals, but making sure that you're delivering on what you wanted to do so that you can get those referrals because there's 
There's no better business lead than a referral, and I think everyone on the call would admit that. Um, now, within AutoTest, now we were talking about doing it profitably. I was talking about doing it efficiently for the first part of my presentation here, because when you're efficient, it allows you to save some time, and saving time is saving money, especially in the services business. So you're going to be able to, with an auto task, analyze client and contract profitability. And you're going to be able to see overall, contract, overall account profitability. And then you're going to be able to see by different types of contracts. Because, like I mentioned, maybe there's things you need to take out of your offering, or maybe there's things that you need to start offering more of because you're killing it. Um, so you can see incident, managed services, time and materials, and, of course, break fix, because break fix is never going to go away as either. And that's going to allow you to see all the different types of profits that you're making off of those individual contracts. And, uh, and, of course, flat fee, retainer, and block hour. Now, guys, that's talking about managing it efficiently and managing it profitably. And, uh, and guys, briefly, uh, before I turn it over to Jeff and hear about his business and, and his success story, I'll tell you, Autotask is 250-plus full-time employees. We're really in growth mode right now. I'm coming to you from Washington, D.C. today. I'm coming to you from a conference from my hotel room. But I'm normally headquartered up in, in New York in our headquarters. That's where we launched. And then we're actually internationally headquartered out in London, England, Sydney, you guys see the rest of them. We're, we're, on a, we're on a growth place, and it's an exciting time to be in the IT services space, exciting time for us to be working with you guys. We have customers in 70-plus countries. We're a SaaS-based solution, so we want to make sure our data is as close to you as possible, so we have multiple data centers around the world that we own and operate. And uh, we have seven languages that we're out in, and we do a lot of education. We do that through our Autotask Academy. We have world-class support 24 by 7. So with that, guys, thank you for the time there. I really appreciate you guys allowing me to walk through that. And what I want to do now is introduce Jeff Sumner, president of Tech Guides. And I want to say thanks to Jeff as well um, because obviously Jeff's got a system in place where he's running efficiently and running properly because he's got an hour to give us right now. So welcome, Jeff, for uh, successfully utilizing Autotask and Rapid Fire together um, and, and talking about his story. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, Rich. Thanks very much. I think, uh, guys, Rich and Mark had asked me to, to speak not just because I had been using both of these tools, but because it will give you a, another sense of not, not just guys, no offense to them, but business development and sales guys trying to get you to buy the product, but somebody who's using it every day. Um, and I've been in the trenches, uh, just like I think most of you probably have been. I founded Tech Guides back in 1999. But I've been in the business since 1993. Uh, you know, back in the day, I like to tell some of my younger techs, I started in 1993 in an apartment in San Francisco doing FileMaker database development, smoking cigarettes, working on a Mac SE, troubleshooting UUCP uh, email servers, and explaining to the phone company what ISDN was and why they were selling it. So for those of you who have been in the business a long time, you understand what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't understand, it also shows I've been around. Um, Today, you can see we're out here in Philadelphia, right outside Philadelphia. Our primary business model is outsourced IT. We're doing outsourced IT, managed services, cloud services. Still some break fix, but not really any, any that we're trying to go after, projects and consulting. And as Rich said, we've grown to the point where I, I really don't have to do any technical work. I consult on certain projects and I direct the business. Um, and the reason why I'm able to do that and not go out there and do any wrenching on, on systems is one, I watch other companies and adopt their best practices and what they're doing right. And that's one of the things that appealed to me today is, you know, I do some things wrong, but I think these two products show something I'm doing right, and I wanted to share that with everyone. And the other one is I, I use all the tools that are available to me. Um, and Autotask and Network Detective are two of those tools that I use. Um, when you signed on for this, Part of the thing about this discussion was on how to win new business. And one of the ways that we uh, win new business is using rapid fire tools and network detective. They, they are key. Um, we run network security scans and network and security scans for every potential client. Uh, Mark was talking about this. This will give us information about the clients, uh, what machines they've got, how their security is, uh, what the OSs are. We don't share everything that we gather with a client. You know, we might just do there's a client summary that we can give to the client. So we run our tools. We run the network detective. And I get a very basic summary, an executive level summary that I can give to the client. That's what I'm doing a proposal, trying to get my foot in the door for some more work. Um, and it says here, you know, often we find we know more about the prospect's network than their current IT support. Just last month, I was in a uh, prospect office. We had run the network detective the day before, and we were trying to build the proposal with her, and I asked her, well, how many machines do you still have on XP? Because they're not going to be included in our managed services until we get them off of XP. She said, well, you know, I don't know. 
I shot an email to my CTO, and five minutes later, he read the report, and he shot back to me, hey, they've got 10 machines still on XP. So one, we know more than their current IT, which makes us look good. Two, I can now build my proposal for them and have the XP be a separate item. And three, that's another source of revenue. Um, and it's also a source of not lost revenue as I'm trying to support these old machines. And that's a great thing about Network Detective and Autotask. I mean, the watchwords for me, uh, because I'm lazy, I guess, are things that are fast, easy, comprehensive, and automated. Um, and it, okay, I went over all that. Why did we sign up for Network Detective? I already said that I'm lazy and I like things to work, you know, work that are easy. We've been using a variety of tools, but they were too cumbersome and too, took too much time. And Mark talked about that, and that's exactly true. We'd go out to clients, and if, if you guys don't have any automated tools right now, you know you have to go out there and you have to build a proposal based on something. And it just takes a lot of time to get that something. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But Network Detective solved those problems for us. And it wasn't just going out for new business. You know, we were doing proposals for new business. We need to gather information about the client. Paid network assessment projects. I don't know if any of you are doing these. These are great if you can get them. You can't always get a client to be an ongoing client, a managed service client, but we have a number of clients who have called us because they know our reputation and say, hey, can you let us know? We're not interested in getting rid of our IT, uh, either staff or IT company, but we just want to know if they're doing things right. So you go in there and you do an assessment and you give them your opinions. And the more you can automate that process, the more profit there is for you. So if something's going to take you 20 hours or it's going to take you 10 hours and you're charging the same amount of uh, money, you're going to make a lot more money uh, per hour on the 10-hour project. Quarterly business reviews, we've talked about those before. Rich mentioned it. I think you all probably know what those are. Every quarter or so, you should be sitting in front of your clients and talk to them about what their system is, what they need, talk about your value, make sure the clients know that they're getting value. And we also use quality control around our service uh, tax and our consultants to make sure they're doing the right job. Not because I'm trying to punish them or I think they're doing the wrong thing. I let my team go off and do the jobs that they need to do. But every so often, you know, maybe it's we launch a new software package, a new backup, something. We need to make sure that our techs are putting the right things on the machines and keeping them updated. And ideally, we wanted it to integrate with Autotask. I thought that was going to be a, a, a pie in the sky thing. But as you'll see and as you've heard, it's true and we can do it. We've been using the Network Detective since 2011. Um, and I, I, I pulled this up right before we started this webinar. I wanted to see when we started in December of 2011. And what I think is interesting is my CTO found out about Network Detective. He emailed me at 2.30 that, that day, whatever, like December 12th, hey, we should do Network Detective. At 10.30 that night, I had purchased it. And the only reason why it took me eight hours is because I have three kids, and I've got things going on here in the business. I just didn't have time to sit down in my machine, get the credit card out, and buy it. It's a great, great product. And you can see here we use it for a number of things, closing prospective clients, onboarding new clients, the regular client technology business reviews, the checks and balances, and ongoing client support. We use it all the time. And there's more stuff. Mark mentioned the inform to build these other reports. There's more and more things we use it for. And I'm always learning things. And one of the great things I love about doing these things is I, I'm always writing notes. Mark said something, hey, run the network detective to get updated inventory to make sure you're getting paid for the machines you're supporting. And I thought to myself, well, I've got the RMM doing that right now, right? We use lab tech. I've got lab tech out there. That's going to tell me my inventory. That pulls a great inventory. But you've got to put that lab tech agent on a machine. And if you don't know the machine exists on your network, you can't put the RMM on it, and you can't get paid for it. Running the network detective regular basis, pulling that information is a great, great idea. So thanks, Mark. You probably just saved me a bunch of money or made me a bunch of money every month. Love to hear Benefits it. Of using <laughs> Benefits of using Network Detective, again, I'm the lazy man, but I like to make money and I like to service my clients. Network Detective, fast and easy, non-invasive. Let's talk about that. Fast and easy. Even I can do it. I used to do technical work. I haven't done technical work since 2006. My guys cringe when I say, oh, I'll take care of that, but they let me run the Network Detective. I can do it when I'm out there on a client visit all by myself. Non-invasive. 
I don't know how many of you go out there where you're in a situation where the client says, we've got tech support, we don't really like them, we need to hire you, but we don't want them to know you're here. Okay, what do you do? If you roll out lab tech, uh, uh, LPI, um, Kase, I'm assuming, I've never used it, but enable, all those other ones I've used before, you've got it. It's a lengthy time to get your RMM out there to install it and then to, to gather the information you need, and they all leave traces. Network Detective rolls back simply without any worry of leaving traces. And this license is behind. I don't know if you guys have out there, you know, you put an RMM out there, you maybe not get the client, you forget to get your licenses back, or you don't have time, or whatever. Then you have licenses out there, these orphan licenses that you're paying for. You know, granted, it's not a ton of money, but you're paying for them. And some other IT firm sees your, your stuff out there. It's not good don't have to worry about it with Network Detective. And I love this part. The reports are generated without any manual interaction. And they're really, they're actually good reports. You know how some products give you these reports, you're like, this is totally worthless to me. These are good reports, guys. You can add stuff to, on your own, but there's many times when I've just run right through with the reports that are given to me. Okay. So the client says, yes, we want you. And, you know, because you've shown them the network detective, you've gone out there, they love you, and because you've been so professional, given them so much information, they don't grind you on price at all, right? That happens all the time. But let's say they do. You can come back to them and say, hey, your other IT firm didn't even know how many XP machines you had on the network. That's why we're more money. Uh, I'm assuming that you'll, you'll be more money. You don't want to be the, uh, the low-cost solution because you're, you're selling yourself on value, not necessarily on price, right? So you've proven your value. They say yes. Now you've got to get going. Okay, our ancient way, when we first started out in 1999, we take all the information, their names, addresses, all that stuff, we start entering it into our homegrown database, right? And we send the client information out to everyone, meaning our, our techs, the Outlook, shared contacts, etc. Hey, here's all the new information about the new client, blah, 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 right? And then you start entering into the database. Here's the servers they have, the OSs. Just a lot of work, and to be honest, if your firms are anything like mine was then, half of it doesn't even get in. It's just in a notebook somewhere. Oh, George has it in his notebook. Ah, okay, well, where's George? Well, George is on vacation. Ah, wonderful. Our old way, um, until 2006, so probably around 2002 to 2006, we had a weak ticket system. I forget the name of the company. It was a, a local, you know, small company. It was better than what we had, but it was a weak ticket system. It was basic stuff. It was a step above Excel. And we would try to build the information. We, we'd enter some of the information. Uh, here's the server. Forget the workstations for now. Let's just put the servers in. And as our relationship with the client progressed, we'd try to get that information into there. Again, the tickets were incomplete. The information wasn't there. Our techs were spending a lot of time chasing down information that we already had. We just didn't know where we had it. In 2006, we switched to Autotask. So what is this, 2013 now. So we've been using Autotask for seven years. And I think that's longer than I think I've used any, any other product that I use to use, uh, run my business except QuickBooks. You know, I mentioned I've used a lot of RMM tools. I switch, uh, uh, you know, every couple years I've had to switch to find something out there that's better. I haven't had to do that with Autotask. And we were looking for integration uh, with these other tools of ours. Outlook, you know, I think uh, uh, lots of you are probably using Outlook. A lot of you are probably using QuickBooks. And quoting, we wanted it to be able to do all these things. Okay? And we've evolved beyond that. As you see here, Autotask, and as Rich was showing, you can do a lot more. I use it to manage my sales pipeline. I use it to run internal reports here about what our techs are doing and hours spent and clients. And then I use it to run reports for my clients. In addition to the network detective reports that I can run, I run these reports that I can then take to a client. Okay? Um, Client asset tracking, I can put all that information in that we learned from a client. All their stuff about all their machines, their servers, their firewall, all that stuff gets into Autotask. And in fact, as I'll, I'll mention again, Network Detective can help us get that information in there because it can take their assets and put that information into Autotask. And there's different ways it can do it and different levels that it can do it, but it helps us get the information in that we need. And there's so much more of the app that we plan to adopt. Seven years we've been using Autotask, and there's still stuff that we know that we need to adopt, and we're very excited to adopt. All right, so how do we manage the clients profitably for life day after day? You know, I told you about some of our ancient ways. Our new way, and this was our new way for the last, uh, since we started with Autotask, um, until about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, our new way was to enter the information right in Autotask and start tracking the client's interactions from day one. 
Okay, so what happens? Hey, we want you as a as our IT support. Great, we enter the information in Autotask. We start going. Okay, we have you know 20, 20, uh, uh, 25 desktops, ten laptops, and five servers. We have to load that information into Autotask. Well, where do we get the information from? We get it from Network Detective, and we also get it though from our RMM. So to get the information from our RMM, we first have to put that on all the machines. So a guy has to roll out, either roll out or go uh, online and put the lab tech, enable, whatever it is, he has to get all those agents on all the machines so we can start compiling information. But what do you do if a client starts calling you? If Joe calls you know, down in the workroom and his engineering machine isn't working, you don't have any information on him yet because you haven't entered it into Autotask. So that enters a really new way. We're going to take the contact information that Network Detective runs for us with uh, the exchange assessments, and we're going to load it into Autotask. Great. So I now have, if their information, if the client information is complete, my information is now complete, contact information. We're going to take the asset information provided by Network uh, Detective and upload it right into Autotask. So we're going to get a whole lot of information from day one. So our consultants, if Joe calls again with that engineering machine, our consultants know immediately who they're talking with. Oh, it's Joe. What equipment? Oh, it's an engineering machine. Oh, he's got XP. All right, we're going to start solving their problems immediately. And we don't have to ask the client a whole bunch of things that they would say, hey, why don't you know this stuff? Okay? What else can we do? How do we do it day to day? Um, Autotask manages almost everything for us. Our schedules. Our tech schedules are on a dashboard that dispatch can use. They can change appointments. They can see what appointments are happening. When they change appointments, right, it can go right to our tech uh, um, outlook. It goes right to it. They also can go on their own dash dashboard and see what their schedules are. Really easy to change schedules around or if you're trying to uh, figure out uh, on your map, hey, where do we need to send a tech if, if you're still going out there rolling trucks, or just even remotely, hey, who has time to take care of a problem? We talked about the client information, contact information, asset info. I forgot. It's not, you know, it's not even on here, I don't think. Invoices. You can track. We do send things to QuickBooks, but Autotask will show me when I send it over to QuickBooks and what I sent over. Contracts. What contracts do you have with your clients? You know, if you're techs, if you let them see this, they can see what information, uh, what kind of contract is with a client, so they know if something's covered or not. Subscriptions. You know, we get in the product and service information. There's subscriptions. Uh, you know, and as cloud services get more and more, we do a lot more of that. Managed services. When they're on managed service contract, we can see it. We can track their hourly work. Warranty renewals. If you're not tracking warranty renewals, that's money you're just leaving on on the table or the client says when they need warranty work, why wasn't my warranty renewed? You guys should be tracking that, not your client. It's a great way for added revenue. Um, and something that's not on here at all, and I couldn't believe it because I use it every single day, quoting. We quote out Autotask all the time. We build the quotes out of Autotask. We shoot them over to the client. They get a web portal. They click on it. They approve it. Boom. Orders made. Money. Ticket creation. So. You can create tickets in lots of different ways. We create tickets a lot of the time. Our dispatch creates tickets. Our client comes through the Autotask portal, creates some of them. Most of our clients use that portal just to see status of tickets. Um, and by this email parser, email to ticket. Client emails, where you get an email from uh, your RMM, it comes in, and I don't do any of this, so forgive me, but I know it works. Uh, based on information in that email, boom, it becomes a ticket. So a lot of work uh, does not have to happen. I'm the lazy man. Remember, I'm lazy, but I like to make money and I like to service my clients. Tickets, send the tickets out to the client before the job so they know what, the, what we think the job is. Oh, you're not on Joe's machine. You're supposed to be on Adam's machine. We know that. After the job, tech closes the ticket and it goes right back out to the clients. And I'm going to let you in on a secret that we use. Um, is one of the hardest things I think for Texas to have them close tickets. But they know that we tell our clients, you're going to get a closed ticket when the job is done. Not in three weeks, not in a week, not in two days. You know, I'm giving myself a little window because sometimes it is the next day. But you're going to get it pretty soon after the job. So the tech knows we've already promised that to the client. They're expecting it. So the tech closes their tickets. So when you do billing, the tickets are already closed. Um, Projects, you can see if projects are profitable. You know, that's always a wonder. You know, we charged $10,000 for this install, but uh, did we make any money? I think we did. I don't know if we did. Autotask can tell you. 
executive dashboard. I love this. You can see an up-to-the-minute report in the hours your guys are doing week after week. You know, go back in history. You're just clicking a button. It shows you a nice, pretty little calendar that that I can understand. Um, revenue information. You know, back in the day, we were getting revenue information every month. I only knew how we were doing every month. You can get revenue information if you've put the correct information in, and by correct, I mean accurate information in an audit task. You can get revenue information daily um, and report. Tons of different reports. Lots of them are included in Autotask. We build a lot of our own, not because the reports are poor in Autotask, but because there's so much information that we want that we can get out of Autotask. Um, managing projects and proposals. That's something else you can do. As I was talking about seeing if your, uh, your projects are profitable, you can also use Autotask to generate reports to see if your managed services are profitable. Okay? And you can also use Autotask to remind clients why they are on managed services. As long as you are profitable, right, it's great to show the client that you are taking care of a bunch of issues. Hopefully they are user related. You know, the user caused them and not your machines, not that you are doing poor support. But you can show the client. When you do your quarterly business reviews, it's a great way to show them the value that they are getting. Equipment refreshes, new equipment. Use your network detective reports to show – this is back to network detective. We use them all the time together. Machine age, outdated OSs, security vulnerabilities. Hey, do you guys need a, a UTM, right? Upgrade that firewall. Mark talked about that sonic wall opportunity. This is the sort of information you give, can give your client. The exchange assessment out of Network Detective, that's great. What if they're migrating to the cloud, migrating to Office 365, migrating to Intermedia, migrating to any one of these other guys, hosted exchange? What size are their mailboxes? How long is it going to take to migrate? What information do I need to know? Use the exchange assessment to give you that information. All right, so making money is also a long-term thing. So Autotask can show you user trends. At a client, who are the heavy users? Who are the ones that you can talk to your client and say, you know, Joe in engineering is using is calling us constantly. What's the issue there? Is there something we need to do to make that uh, to lower that? Because when he's calling us, he's not working. Ticket trends. Are we solving the same issue over and over and over? And that goes both for the client. Are you solving the same issue for the client? And back to you. Are you solving the same issue? If you are, if there's a problem that your clients keep happening, having, is that something that you need to do with your tech team to fix things? Coverage trends. How much time are you spending at a client? Is it the right time, the right amount? You might have somebody on site every day in the morning, but then you're getting – you can see on the tickets they're not really doing any work. But after two, when everyone gets back from wherever they are playing golf or whatnot, you're getting all these calls. Maybe you should put your person there, not in the morning, but in the afternoon. Network Detective, we talked about some of this. Is your RMM tool doing its job? Run Network Detective on a regular basis to see, hey, is your backup uh, updating? Is your antivirus updating? Are the patches happening? Network Detective can show you. Because remember, your RMM, if it doesn't know, it can't show you what it doesn't know. Um, Oh, your tech's doing their job. Again, we go back to running Network Detective is everything locked down. Even if the RMM isn't doing its job, your tech who's falling behind maintaining that RMM needs to be able to do that work, it should be doing that work. Network Detective will help you with that. Um, and what's changed with the network over time? Both those new machines that you might not know, not know of coming in, but you can show the client, hey, when we did your risk report, you scored kind of high because you had all these XP machines. We've cleaned them all out. Sure, it costs a little bit of money to upgrade them, but look, now you're rock solid and you're tight and nothing's getting in. Keeping your clients happy equals retention. Retention equals money for you over the long haul. Recurring revenue, month in and month out. Quarterly business reviews are essential, but only if they're done properly. You can't go in there with a quarterly business review and say, hey, I think everything's great, and that's the end of the meeting, and you hear the crickets. Using network detective reports, using autotask reports, sometimes I get pulled into uh, quarterly business reviews, you know, hey, Jeff, we're doing a QBR at 2. We really want you to come. I didn't even know we were having one. I can run those reports that morning and be ready to go that afternoon. It is that easy. Now, optimally, you want a little more time, but it is that easy. Stop taking hours building the reports, right? Pulling things together from uh, Exchange, all these different places. Your, your techs write things down on their notepads. You're trying to understand their stuff. Use Autotask when you go to see your client to present these trends, the tickets worked, what users were helped, um, and use it to back up your billing if they have any questions. Great ways to use it. Network Detective, use it to, prevent the, uh, to present the status of your network. Over time, show them how you've been helping them. Have each month, you're locking down the network more and more and more. Um, 
and use those tools with the professional reports to present that information to the client professionally, solid, and complete. And also, use it. I use them before I go to that meeting to make sure. This, and if there is some surprise or something that hasn't happened that should have, you proactively take care of it. And you go into that meeting and you say, hey, we did not do X, Y, Z. Here's why. Here's what we're doing to take care of it. And then use both tools to show your worth, show the client they're getting the value for their money, discuss the network trends, discuss business trends, and start suggesting some upgrades in products and services that the client can see make sense. So I think that's it. That's how we use these products. Hey, Jeff. Rich? Thank you very much. And, and guys, I, I appreciate you hanging out with us and, and giving us this full hour. And, and we've got about 10 minutes left, so we've got a few more things to walk through. But... It was real timely. I, I like quotes a lot, especially from people who have been real successful. So when Jeff's talking about being lazy, it was real funny because I just had been passed this over. And uh, Bill Gates had said, I'm sure some of you guys have heard this before, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because he will find an easy way to do it. And uh, I think some of the stuff we're talking about today is just not necessarily being a lazy person or, or having all of, all of those things be in the mix, but it's just recognizing that there is other ways to do it. There's more efficient ways to do it. And so, guys, I'm going to turn it over here because Mark's going to actually summarize quick what's going on and, and bring this all back together. So welcome, Mark, again. And then, guys, we've got special offers and Q&A for you. Hey, thanks, Rich. And a fantastic presentation, Jeff. And, <laughs> Rich, I love that quote with the lazy person. Terrific stuff. I may have to steal that. Um, so just to quickly summarize things, and um, as Rich mentioned before, we do have some special offers. but. Uh, you know, let me just summarize. Network Detective gives you the ability to run the non-invasive scans on your client and prospect networks really very easily and quickly. And since the data collection is automated, you won't accidentally forget to gather, you know, key information like you might if you're doing it by hand or with point tools. Um, and you know, the ability to populate configuration items and auto task for each new client will really save you a ton of time and reduce the chance of errors. And of course, you know, the whole point of this is to close more new business and projects with existing clients and, and gain retention um, with existing clients. And definitely, you know, consider using the security module reports to develop and brand a security service. Um, the result there is going to be more satisfied and loyal clients. And I've never spoken to an MSP yet who wasn't looking for a way to increase retention and stickiness while at the same time creating a, you know, a brand new affordable recurring revenue stream. So Network Detective, uh, the way this the, the product is put together and sold, it's comprised of three separate modules that, uh, again, you can purchase individually or bundle together uh, depending upon your business needs. So the network assessment module. Uh, the reports here, uh, and there's a number of them in each module, they cover a wide array of things. Um, here you're going to find everything you need to scope a contract, find product, projects, you know, document what's in your client or prospect network. Every report is professional and potentially customer facing, uh, and you decide what you provide them. And you'll find that the client risk report is a great way to present uh, you know, information to a less technical resource like a business owner or in a prospecting situation, you know, tie your analysis or recommendations together with um, the client risk report. And of course, you can export information uh, directly to Autotask from the network assessment module. Uh, security assessment. This module plays terrific with the network assessment, as um, these reports you know, really help provide additional ammunition to sell against a current provider. And overall, they're great for boosting your recurring revenue by performing those regular security checkups I mentioned, you know, whether that's monthly or quarterly. And you'll also find a lot of projects and opportunities to resell managed firewall or content filtering services, for instance. And again, you know, a ton of great reports there. And I should mention, all of our reports, uh, these sample reports, are available to take a look on our website. Um, all these reports are delivered to you as the native Word and um, the Excel output. So you know, they're yours. Not only will you brand them in our tool, but you can get in and edit them if you like. And uh, the Exchange module, you know, great information, detail, and insight, as Jeff was saying, into your client's exchange environment, you know, mailboxes, size, distribution lists, quotas, mobile device use, and a lot more. Uh, it's great for regular documentation, but yeah, as you can imagine, our customers really love it for migration projects.